Now that you've learned how to fill out the electronic configurations, we can go a little bit deeper into looking at some of the exceptions that occur when you fill out configurations is not as straightforward. On the other hand, it is if you just look at the periodic table. We'll learn about how to fill out configurations for ions also. Um, and uh, what are core and valence electrons, and then some of the properties of these elements, uh, which come from the fact that you're filling out electrons in a certain way. So we will talk about those also. There are a couple exceptions that we have for filling out orbitals. Um, you will see that in chemistry, we have almost everything, you know, pretty much by the rules, but sometimes there are some exceptions okay and in this case also you already know about one exception okay and that was the energy rule and the energy was that you fill out the lower energy level first so even though you're not filling out according to the shells you're filling out according to energy and for that reason you're filling out 4s before you fill out the 3d okay and that is an exception because technically speaking i mean if you're in the third shell you should fill the third shell completely before going on to four all right so that is what anybody would think but that doesn't really quite happen okay so that is one exception which we have already learned when we were filling out um, the configurations the second one that we have is uh, specifically for the transition metals okay now transition metals can have up to 10 electrons in there okay that's the d subshell so you can have up to 10. so the first exception is for the fourth column which is chromium column all right and so it goes for the chromium and the entire column below it and so chromium should be 4s2 3d4 okay because it's in the fourth column so you should have four uh, d electrons but it turns out that it's actually 4s1 3d5 which means that one electron from the s has gone into d okay and so what happens then is now d is half filled d can have up to 10 electrons but now d has five electrons whereas s has one electron so if you think about it this is kind of uh, interesting because now for s and d everything is singly filled all right which means everything is unpaired which is a lot more stable than s2 this being paired and then d with only four electrons in it okay and so now with d is half filled all singly filled electrons and then s will give one electron to the d to make that happen and this is just because it leads to more stability okay that's all there is to it so it will happen in all the elements below chromium so molybdenum should also have the same kind of an exception okay for this the second exception that occurs is for copper which is uh, the ninth column and in this case we have the same problem because d is going to have nine electrons in it okay it's going to be a lot more stable if it has 10 electrons in it which are all going to be now paired electrons so again it will take one electron from the s and put it into the d all right and therefore 4s1 3d10 is what the configuration is for copper and all the elements below it okay and so this leads again to more stability that's the only reason why this kind of a thing happens but you have to remember these exceptions because this is really how it is it is not the way you would logically think it should be but um, we have to think in terms of atomic stability and all that and therefore this is uh, the exceptions that actually occur so here's the periodic table all right and uh, let me classify this again for you a little bit if you remember we've learned some of the names before so for example group one is considered to be the alkali metal group two is alkaline earth and so on and so forth but now we're going to divide it according to electronic configuration all right and according to how you fill electrons in the elements the first two uh, groups are called the s block okay because remember s can have only two electrons in it so group number one and group number two these can take s electrons so this is called the s block group group number three to group number eight okay they can uh, have up to six electrons in it and this is the p block then okay because this is where you're filling in all the p electrons 
helium is a little bit out of place here because helium you're still filling the 1s electrons okay so that should actually belong in the s block then here are the transition metals and the transition metals there are 10 columns so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and so you can have up to 10 electrons and this is the called the d block then from the middle over here we have the f blocks okay and f blocks f can have up to 14 electrons because remember f was coming from 4 and 4 can have um, from three excuse me and so it can have uh, seven different orientations okay and so therefore you have 14 electrons in the f block and so currently we have two of the f blocks so 4f and 5f there are not enough elements in the world in the universe to have a 6f or a 7f yet okay so this is where we are right now and this is how the periodic table is divided according to uh, different blocks from the electronic configuration and here's the electronic configuration you may want to keep this handy for a while but of course you can't use this on an exam so you need to understand this okay so the first block here remember these two are the s block and in case of the first block you can see that are in the first uh, group all the elements are ending in s1 s1 and s1 okay because there's only one electron okay for that group for group number two everything is ending in two electrons okay which is from s then you come to group number three now s is already filled up so now you start filling with p and so then p is all one 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 and then this carbon group is p2 the nitrogen group is p3 p4 p5 p6 okay that's how it goes and then here we have uh, the D block. In case of D block, there is D1, D2, D3. Now there is no D4. We talked about that just now with the exception. So there is no D4. There are two D5s. Okay, in one case, you have the 4S1 and 3D5. In the other case, you have the traditional 4S2 and 3D5. Then D6, 7, 8. And again, remember, there is no 3D9 because it is 4s1 3d10 and then here is the 4s2 3d10 and that is how the electronic configuration is if you follow the rows, uh, if you follow the columns the only thing that changes as you go down any kind of a column is the shell number so for example for boron the shell number is 2 for aluminum the shell number is 3 and then 4 and 5 and so on okay so the shell numbers are also given to you here on the left hand side so group number um, row number one is shell number one row number two is shell number two row number three is shell number three okay and so on this is how it kind of goes now um, a little bit later i'm going to go ahead and fill this out for you according to the periodic table okay so for example we can pick a random element and then try and fill it out okay but this is how the periodic table is now one thing i want to show you here real quick before we go on is in the third row which has 3s 3p and 3d you can see you have the 3s there is the 3p but there is no 3d and that's because the 3d is actually down here okay why is it down here is because we fill 3d after we fill 4s okay so we have the 4s and then we have the 3d then we come out again to 4 and how do we know this is 4 this is because helium is shell number 1 neon is shell number 2 argon is shell number 3 and so by the time you get to this row here with krypton this is shell number 4 okay so as we say the transition metals are kind of sunken okay a little bit they are below the third shell all right just below it so you go out to 4 go into 3 you go out to 5 and then you go inside to 40 you are in the sixth shell over here with cesium and barium but when you fill out lanthanum from 6s you go to 5d okay that's how it goes and see over here you're going to 4f which is even 
over here, which is even before that, okay? So uh, because of energy considerations, we have these little things, but the periodic table really helps out because the periodic table is actually arranged according to the energy levels. So if you follow the periodic table, you cannot go wrong, all right? Um, then let's get on to what is called the valence and core electrons. Valence electrons are the outermost electrons. Core electrons are inside. Outermost electron meaning in the outermost shell. The highest shell number, which is the N number. Okay, number three here is the highest one. So that is the valence electrons. Everything inside is the core. All right, so whatever has the highest principal number, okay, the main quantum number N, that number is the valence electrons, okay? And so uh, when you start filling out electrons later on with the D orbitals, then you know that for D, we actually have to go inside um, and then come outside for P again, all right? And so those D are not counted as valence electrons. You only look at the higher number of the principal quantum number. So 4S2, 4P4, which means we have six valence electrons, okay, in um, case of selenium. We've also learned about valence electrons um, back in chapter two when we were doing bonding. Whatever group number you have, that's the valence electrons you will have. So if selenium is found in group number six, it has six valence electrons. Silicon is found in group number four, so it has four valence electrons. So technically, it should not be that hard. However, in this chapter, or starting from this chapter, you also should be able to figure out exactly where those valence electrons are. Not only just how many they are, but they actually exist in S or P orbitals. And then there is something called noble gas configuration. Noble gas configurations are very useful when you get to really large number of electrons. Okay, so for example, we were filling out iodine and iodine is humongous. Okay, 53 electrons was a lot to fill out. Uh, although it's very easy, okay, because all you have to do is follow the periodic table, but still it's a very large number of electrons to fill out. So what we do in that case is we look at the noble gas just before the element, okay? So here is an example for bromine. In case of bromine, um, you have uh, 35 electrons and the noble gas coming after bromine is krypton. So you can't use krypton. You look at the noble gas before bromine and that is argon, okay? And so then you fill out um, argon and then the rest of the electrons after argon okay so argon is the noble gas argon takes care of 18 electrons because argon has 18 electrons so you don't have to fill out those 18 electrons you fill out the rest of these electrons okay so which means until over 3p6 is taken care of the last three then you have to fill out so that makes life a lot easier for us because then we don't have to fill out every single electron at every single level, okay? And so you can use noble gas configuration pretty much for everything, but please, you have to note that unless the question is asking you for noble gas configuration, do not give the noble gas configuration. If you're asked to fill out the SPDF notation for anything, then you have to give it for the entire thing, all right? So bromine, this is the entire SPDF notation. This is the, no the noble gas configuration, all right? So please read the question carefully as to what it is asking you. Okay, so um, one thing that you need to note over here uh, in this case is for the noble gas is that D is still the core electrons. These are the valence electrons, four and four, okay? Four shell. Uh, the fourth shell, so two plus five, these are uh, the valence electrons. D comes in core, but that's not the point for noble gases. Noble gases is that you take care of a certain number of electrons that are found in the noble gas. So for example, neon, argon, krypton, you can use those to fill out certain number of electrons. In case of ions, you have less or more electrons. Okay, so for example, if you have a cation, then electrons have been given away. 
the electrons go away from the higher energy level first. A higher energy level meaning valence electrons are given away first. All right. In case of anions, electrons are added and electrons are added again in the valence shell. Everything happens in the valence shell. When we get to transition metals, then things will start happening in the core electrons because for transition metals, the, uh, all the electrons are in the core, right? They're not in the valence. So then you have to deal with the core electrons. But as far as for all the main group elements, the S block and the P block is concerned, you have to remove electrons from the outer shell and add electrons to the outer shell. Okay, so for example, if we have aluminum and aluminum can give away three electrons, it will give away the valence electrons, which are the 3s2 and 3p1. So by the time you're writing the electronic configuration for Al3+, aluminum 3+, you will have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 because three electrons have been given away. In case of anions, we have to add the electrons. And when you add the electrons, then remember that you're adding again to the valence shell. Okay, so for sulfur, for example, sulfur can take two electrons. So you will add them in the valence shell. Okay, whichever one is the highest energy level one then. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, that's all fine, 3s2. And then 3p4 is where the two electrons will come in. So when you write the electronic configuration now, 3p will have six electrons instead of the four because now you added the two electrons. Okay, so that's how you write the electronic configurations for ions. The last concept to talk about um, in this section is paramagnetism and diamagnetism. The paramagnetism and diamagnetism come from the fact that electrons have magnetic spin, as we talked about. And magnetic spin was how we paired up electrons. Remember, we were filling electrons singly first and then pairing them up in boxes. And so paramagnetism comes from the fact that electrons are unpaired. Okay, so if you fill singly um, the electrons in the, in the boxes, then it means that those substances can be magnetized. Okay, so paramagnetism means that any element can be magnetized. And the only way they can be magnetized is if they have unpaired electrons. Because remember, all the electrons are spinning in the same direction. So then they can be magnetized, just like the Earth is also magnetized. Similarly, a diamagnetic substance uh, is all has all paired electrons and a diamagnetic substance cannot be magnetized okay and that is why some elements for example like iron can be easily magnetized okay you can make make great uh, magnets okay using iron but then some substances cannot be magnetized like tin because it has all paired electrons and so tin cannot be magnetized so that is a property that comes from the electron spin okay excuse me the magnetic spin of any element, which is the MS number. If you want to read more about this, you can go to this site from your PowerPoints. Okay, the ChemWiki from UC Davids. It's a pretty good website and uh, it'll give you a lot more information. Your concepts for this presentation are, of course, how to fill out configurations using the noble gas configuration. And as you saw, it really shortens your work, okay, a little bit, provided you get the right noble gas for it. What are the valence and core electrons? You should know that definitely will help you in the next chapter as we go on for bonding. And then the electronic configuration of ions as to which electrons are removed first. And, remo and remember, whatever is the valence is the one that goes first. And then the two properties, paramagnetism and diamagnetism. So you should understand all of these concepts before you go ahead.